Hey, welcome back. Uh, again, I'm going to try to do a small one. I have one. I have something else going on after this. Uh, now this is the velocity of, of um, the money stock, basically. And I didn't really, you know, I know about M2 and all that. Um, but I wanted to like kind of show something here. Also, the velocity of money is the frequency of which one unit of currency is used to purchase domestically pr produced goods and services within a time period. It is the number of times one dollar is spent to buy goods and services per unit of time. If the velocity of money is increasing, then more transactions are occurring between individuals and an economy. The frequency of currency exchange can be used to determine the velocity of a given component of the money supply, providing some insight into whether consumers and businesses are saving or spending their money. There are several components of uh, money supply, M1, 2, and 3, which they don't which they no, no longer track. Uh, these components are arranged on a spectrum of uh, narrowest to broadest. Consider M1 the narrowest component. M1 is the money supply of currency in circulation, notes and coins, trans, uh, travelers checks, non-bank issuers, uh, demand deposits and checkable deposits. A, a decreasing velocity of M1 might indicate fewer short-term consumption transactions are taking place. Mm -hmm. Oops. There we go. Uh, so what I'm getting at is the sense of velocity of money in regards to this is through exchange for goods and services because there's such little velocity that could, to me, was this is how I'm reading it, mean that there's less money having to buy more things, meaning that the cost of goods and services are going down. At least that's how I'm reading it again. Let's see. Yep, quarter two of 2022, uh, 1.167. So... I mean, that's how I'm taking it. I mean, maybe I don't know as much as I should on this yet, but that's that's what I that's the then this is seasonally adjusted, so it's taking other season obviously other circumstances in in and uh in comparisons. Let's see. And is this it? I was trying to find what they okay this this might be it so was, there's been a lot of talk about how cbdc's are going to be um ways to uh go away from reserve like paper money and into digital more um let's see this is from the fed itself i'm not really sure when the data was but anyway uh, executive sum summary for a na for a nation's economy to function effectively, its citizens must have confidence in its money and payment services. The Federal Reserve, as a nation's central bank, works to maintain the public's confidence by for, uh, fostering monetary stability, financial stability, and safe and efficient payment system. This paper is the first step in public discussion between Federal Reserve and stakeholders about central bank digital currencies. The purpose of this paper, a CBDC, is defined as a digital liability of a central bank that is widely available to the general public. In this respect, it is uh, analogous to a digital form of paper money. The paper has been designed to foster a broad and transparent public dialogue about CBDCs in general and about the potential benefits and risk of U.S. CBDC. The paper is not intended to advance any specific policy outcome, nor is it intended to signal that the Federal Reserve will be will make any imminent decisions about the appropriation, appropriation appropriateness of issuing a U.S. CBDC. Background: Payment technologies offered by the Federal Reserve have evolved over time. In the Federal Reserve's earliest years. It established a national check clearing system and used dedicated tel uh, telegraph wires to transfer funds between banks. 
In the 1970s, Reserve Bank, uh, Reserve uh, Federal Reserve developed an automated clearinghouse or ACH system that offered an electronic alternative to paper checks. And in 2019, the Federal Reserve Committee uh, committed, sorry, to build the Fe the FedNow service, which will provide real time around the clock interbank payments every day of the year. Recent technology advances have ushered in a way of new private sector pri uh, financial products and services, including digital wallets, mobile uh, payment ops, ops apps, and the and new uh, digital assets such as cryptocurrencies and stable coins. These technology these advances have also led central banks around the globe to explore the potential benefits and risk of issuing a CBDC. Federal Reserve uh, policymakers and staff have studied CBDC closely for several years, uh, guided by an understanding that the, the U.S. CBDC should, among other things, provide benefits to households, businesses, and the overall economy that exceed any cost and risk. Yield such benefits more effectively than alternative methods. Uh, comp compl complement rather than replace current forms of money and methods for providing financial services, protect consumer privacy, protect against criminal activity, and have broad support from the key stakeholders. The, Reserve, uh, the Federal Reserve is committed to soliciting and reviewing a wide range of views as it continues to study whether a U.S. CBDC would be appropriate uh, ir irrespective uh, of any alternative conclusion, Federal Reserve Bank or Federal Reserve staff, excuse me, will continue to pay an active role, play an active role in developing international standards for CBDCs. Key topics: This paper begins with a uh, discussion of existing forms of money, the current state of the U.S. payment system, and its relative strength and its challenges and the various uh, digital assets that have emerged in recent years, including stablecoins and other cryptocurrencies. The paper then turns to CBDC, focusing on its uses and, fo and functions, of potential benefits and risk, and related fo uh, policy considerations. The Federal Reserve's initial analysis suggests that a potential U.S. CDB CBDC, if one were created, would best serve the needs of the United States by being private, privacy-protected, intermediated, widely transferable, and, identi and identity-verified. As noted above, however, the, the paper is not intended to advance a specific policy outcome and takes no position on the ultimate desirability of U.S. CBDCs. I see public outreach. The Federal Reserve will seek input from a wide range of stakeholders and that might that might use a CBDC or be affected by its introduction. The paper concludes with a request for public comment. The first uh, the first step in a uh, broad uh, consultation that will also include targeted outreach and public forums. Uh, let's see, the Federal Reserve is exploring the applications. Of and options for issuing a CBDC for the purpose of this paper. A CBDC is defined as a digital liability of the Federal Reserve. Okay, all this stuff I've already read. So, anyways, I just wanted to try to see if I can get as much clarifications as I can. Uh, we'll have to find out what happens. But anyway, that's what I want to say on that. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. And just kind of on a political note, apparently, oops, excuse me, apparently uh, Trump is running again. And apparently, due to this, I guess uh, he has enough money in his war chest that, has, that can't be used for political purpose to maybe settle those uh, liabilities he now has uh, in regards to um, lawsuits and whatnots. This is going to be a Another fight between two old guys, both in their seventies. One can barely keep his teeth in, and one can barely stay stay awake. Um, if anybody doesn't run as third party, because unfortunately, a lot of states third parties are not allowed on the ballot, which is total BS. It should never have happened in the first place. But it just shows you the consolidation of power that the two party system or part two party dictatorship, whichever you want to call it. 
uh, wanted cheap. So that said, uh, I myself, if I'm allowed to vote, I will not vote until the primaries. Uh, not until primaries, I'm sorry, until the general election. Then I'll find out who's actually on the ballot after that in the third party and then vote for then vote third party. For anybody who wishes to try to badmouth anybody who wants to vote third party, just think about how the two party system has actually affected everybody else's life but yourselves. If you are paid by a DNC in any way, shape, or form, you had nothing to talk about. You had nothing, you had no opinion because you, you get paid by the same system that we're trying to get rid of. Um, for any uh, pundits out there, same thing. They should not be talking. They have a alternative motive. They get paid by the system that they're talking positive about it. It goes on. It goes both ways on both sides of the aisle. It should be multiple sides of the aisle, not just two. Uh, as far as Bernie Sanders, I, I, I have learned from my past mistakes. I will never vote for Bernie Sanders or anybody like him again who chooses to run as a Democrat. He was uh, he was offered a spot in the Green Party. In the Green Party, I no longer agree with as far as like their monetary policies uh, and the mandate for the vaccine. I don't agree with them whatsoever as far as those two things go. The two things go. With that said. If you want a third party on the ballot, you you better get your butt out there and start making sure that they're, they're on every ballot in every state. Or make sure that they're at least on the general ballot in every state. Um, if you truly want to change the stupid system, make yourself smarter and make the system smarter. I myself, I would be looking for someone who is modern monetary theory smart, efficient in that, knows what functional finance is, knows who Eva Lerner was, and stuff of that nature. If you want to support what I do, support org. If you want to support MMT or real progressive policies and not just the pol not just the parties then I would suggest you support real progressives there's one thing that this organization that I'm volunteering with is very good at and that is messaging and being out there and not backing down from anybody pretty much you fight one of us you fight us all in regards to debating online So look up modern monetary theory, not the crap that you hear from Paul Krugman or Larry Summers or, or Larry Fink, all of whom get paid by the system, all of whom have set policies that have derailed and effed up all of our lives in many different ways throughout history. So get smart, learn modern monetary theory. As Steve Grumbine talks, as Stephanie Kelton talks, as Warren Moser talks, as Stephen Keen talks, as Bill uh, uh, Mitchell talks, as I talk, and everybody else who's involved with a modern monetary theory talks, and the policies that we back. Those policies are deflationary no matter what side of the aisle you are. If you're looking for deflationary and cost, Every single one of the of the policies that we back do that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a good night. I'll be back on tomorrow. Peace out for now. And go to realprogressives.org. And also, I still have a fundraiser on Facebook, Calvin Taylor. Look it up. I'm about $20 away from the goal of $200. So... If you got it, please spread it. Peace out for now.